I am Katie Huff and I am the founder and CEO of Katie Huff Ministries. What makes my company different than others is I encompass the mind, body, and spirit for women to live at a level 10. My story is I was engaged to a man that is not a Christian and I am a Christian and it was a very difficult relationship and I'm grateful through the grace of God I was able to be set free from settling shame and self-betrayal, realizing that God needed to be in the center of my relationship. My purpose and calling on my life is to help other women to be set free and to live at a level 10 where they are using their gifts, talents, and experiences with what is on their heart so they can walk out what God's calling is on their life as well. My no-brainer offer is to have you come to Montana and come to a women's retreat where you will be set free to be, do, and have all that God has called you to be, leaving a remarkable legacy. What I would love for you to do is to go to katy-huff.com, my website, and click on that free 30-minute consultation so you can see if this is a great fit for you to come to Montana. She was incredible. You know, she really taught us a lot of things and made us look deep inside. You owe it to yourself to give this gift to yourself so that you can come back and be a better mom. I would really love to hear from you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Katie Huff with Katie Huff Ministries, and you are listening to Setting Yourself Free, a podcast where we are encouraging people to be set free from whatever is holding you back from being, doing, and having all that God has created you to be. And I just want you to know that you can follow us on katiehuffministries.com and that is www.katy-huff.com to learn more about books, coaching, courses, and retreats. You can follow me on Facebook, Apple, Spotify, Rumble, Instagram, and Twitter. And the most important thing is to go to YouTube, subscribe to Katie Huff Ministries, and push that button so you can hear about all these incredible stories of what people have done to set themselves free. And so I am so excited to have my dear friend, my brother from another mother, Mr. Agar Thomas from North Carolina, who I have had the pleasure to walk beside him in the last 24 years in our career. And we are here to talk about what all God has done to set us free. So Mr. Agar Thomas, my brother, thank you for the last 24 years of friendship. Thank you for you being the man that you are with such a huge heart that everybody that knows you loves you. And that I know that you've gone through a lot of stuff as we all have. And that I'm just excited to hear what God has set you free from. And so thank well, you. Thank you for having me. I am. Um, I, I look forward to this. I actually had honestly fell asleep earlier. <laughs> so when you called me, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm supposed to be doing this tonight, right? <laughs> and so before I called you back, I said, well, let me look and find, these, find what she sent me. And I didn't see it. I was like, no, she didn't send it to me. So I got some time. So I got to <laughs> let her know. No, I don't have to. <laughs> but, Anyway, it is. Uh, I am. Uh, I am delighted and excited about it. Um, you're right. We have been knowing each other. I say, uh, my sister from another mother with the same father. <laughs> that's right. That's the way I say it. That's right. Um, and um, and that's what it's all about. Because one of the things I think that drew us close together, in fact, I know it was, is the fact that we. We're a part of the same business and that business model, the owners of that business model were God fearing men and women yes. uh, in Harlan and Shirley Stone Cipher. And the result of that was, you know, it was so interesting because every time we go to a conference or convention and the man got ready to give his keynote speech, he starts it out with a scripture. And I'm like, who does that? <laughs> Most people just won't do that. Because they are so fixated on profits and money and not wanting to upset anybody, you know. And I just used to love that he would give his scriptures and he said, I make no apologies for that. And I was like, man, this is where I'm supposed to be. This man right. says he makes no apologies for that. That's you right. Know? So uh that is um uh, that 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 in itself was great. And 
it caused people like you and me, other men and women in the body of Christ to blend together mm -hmm. and to and to become not just a business partner or have a business friendship, but a relationship. And the relationship was founded with him. Amen. And and that and that's that's what it was all about to me. Yeah, that was it. I, I agree. And uh, the fact that he would come out and his favorite, it seemed like his favorite scripture, which is mine, is the, uh, the John 10, 10, that he has, 10. Yep. It was life and to the, to the fullest. And we were like, yep. hallelujah, we were loving that's it. Right. That's, that's what right. we felt and that's what, what was happening. Yep, exactly. And, you know, you think about, because I, I thought back about how the short sellers used to go after him so much. Oh, yeah. And they, and, and they never could win, though. And, and, and I always said, I said, you know, that's God. Yeah, no is. matter how much they shot at him, you know, God would always get him. He, it, the company might be stagnant for a minute, but it would always come back up better than it was before with the short sellers. And it was nothing but the fact that he stood on the principles of God. And that was just it. That was just it. That's just the way he was. Yes. You know? Yes. And and um, man, we we were totally committed. 150% oh, yeah. because oh, he was yeah. such an incredible, inspiring leader. And I right. would love when he would look at us and he would say, you know, you had a great year last year, Katie, but I want you to have an even a better year next year. Yeah. I mean, always yeah. speaking life into us, which yeah. is unheard of in any business today, for the most part, where they're speaking life into you. Um, I always, and you know, our theme obviously was making a living while making a difference. I'll make a difference in the lives of people. Yeah, exactly. I remember uh, we had something that was up in Nashville. Uh, we were up in Nashville and this place we were at, it was inside, but it, it looked like it was like you're on the outside and with, with, you know, temperature controls and stuff like that. And it was so weird because you'd be in there like, man, it feels so good in here. I'm outside. And then when you actually literally go outside, then you feel all this heat. And I never will forget as we were leaving that that conference that time, he said, "Hey, God, you did a good job. Did a good job this past year, this this past year." And you know, I'm sitting thinking to myself, "Yeah, man, yeah, man, so I did a good job." He said, "But you can do better." <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, okay, yeah, you're right." <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, uh, but, but like you say, that kind of encouragement especially when you knew it was coming from somebody who truly wanted you. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people in corporate America these days, they say that, but they actually want to lead. They've got a lid on how far they really want you to go. Right. He really wanted you. Yeah. Because you remember he's, his thing was he wanted to be known as the person who created more millionaires than anybody else. That's right. And, and he honestly felt that way. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. awesome. So can you share a sequence of events that you've gone through? for yourself to get set free. Cause I know that you've, you've had a lot of incredible positive experiences in the last, you know, you've been there longer than me, the last 27 or 28 years, obviously. Um, but even just in life, I mean, there's been, you know, it's been a roller coaster for a lot of us in the last say five, seven years, at least. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I think the biggest thing for me, uh, I hit the situation with my bride of this year, mm -hmm. August, August the 29th would be 31 years. My beautiful bride, yes. Michelle. Yes. Uh, she, yes. uh, probably about uh, 13, 14 years ago, she was having these blackout spells. We didn't know what it was. We, you know, went to the cardiologist. They said it wasn't heart related. Went to the neurologist and said it wasn't stroke related. And but the problem was she didn't have them consistently. She mm -hmm. may have one now. In fact, the, the very first one that she had, the very first, let me turn my phone. Make sure I don't get that thing. Okay. The first one she had, we actually were in convention in Oklahoma City. And I was with uh, we were Teresa Johnson. We were down eating. And Michelle was leaning over, and I thought she was leaning over to pick up something. But she was actually. I'm lot losing you. When you lean to the right or the left, your okay. isn't there. So great. Is that better now? That is. Thanks. That yeah. Well, she was leaning over, 
And we, I thought she was leaning over to pick her pocketbook up, but actually she was passing out. Mm. So we got a cab back and we didn't even go. I was telling her, well, let's, let's don't worry about going to the ED bank. She said, no, I'll be all right. Well, she didn't have another. That was like in April. She didn't have another incident until another three or four months. Then it was another three or four months. So we didn't know what was going on. So we went through this all probably two years trying to find out what was what. And finally, there was a couple that was in Cleveland, Ohio, that I had mentored in our business. And they said to me one day, she said, well, uh, Mr. Thomas, she said, there's, not that she's got to call me Mr., but she's a part of Donnell's organization. Donnell, they always call the other associates Mr. or Miss, whatever. And she said, Mr. Thomas, she said, um, have you ever heard of the Mayo Clinic? And I said, yeah, I have. And she said, well, we live about 20 minutes from the Cleveland Clinic. She said, just like the Mayo Clinic, she said, I'm telling you, if there's anybody specialist that can find out what this is all about, they can find it. So we actually went up there and uh, actually, I think we stayed at their house. And in one day, they found out she was having what was called temporal epileptic seizures. Mm. Now, that threw us because when they were asking us the questions about that, and you were the medical background, you know, they were asking us questions about, we kept looking at each other like, why are they asking about seizures? I don't understand. Because it would always start in her stomach, and then it would go up, and then all of a sudden she'd pa pass out. And um, so when we got to the guy, I said, well, look, even though it's only happening once every three or four months, he said, oh, we've had it where it only happens like once a year. He said, we've had it, where, had it where it happens only once a year. And I was like, oh, okay. So anyway, make a long story short, they put on this medication and fast forward, it started having an effect on her memory. And so they called it, they didn't call it Alzheimer's, they called it vascular dementia. Hmm. That's what they called it. Wow. They said, because see, even now, her only thing, she doesn't talk that much. She talks very, very limited, but she knows me. She knows our daughter, our son. She knows all of us. She doesn't call our names out. Uh, so she's not one of these people that would talk and say, because a lot of people say, oh, they can remember stuff from long back. So they'll talk about stuff from long back, but they can't remember stuff recently. No, she doesn't do any talking hardly in at all, but she can't dress herself. She can't wash. I mean, she can't wash herself to a certain extent, but, you know, stuff like that has to be done for her. And so as a caregiver, mm -hmm. it was different for me mm. because, you know, but I never thought anything about it, Katie. I never, I, it, it didn't phase me at all because number one, it's what I supposed to do. Right. Number two, if the roles were reversed, she would have done the exact same thing. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. when I have people that would, I would have to explain to people who said, oh, you're a good man. Why am I what you're doing? And I would always kind of like, hey, pump the brakes for a minute, okay? I understand where you're coming from, mm -hmm. but it is what I'm supposed to do as a godly man with a wife. Right. And, they, and they would say, I understand what you're saying, but they were saying they knew so many people in the body of Christ right. that didn't do that. And they would just put their spouses away and go on and move on and get with somebody else and all kinds of right. things like that. Like, really? I never, that never crossed my mind. I never thought about it. But I just didn't realize that that's the way things were looked at. So therefore, I, I accept when people say that. But I'm always cautious to say, pump the brakes now. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do anyway. So I don't understand why you're giving me pats on the back for something I'm supposed to do anyway. You know, Edgar, I, I hear what you're saying, and, and I actually have walked that with my mom and dad when they were alive. Um, I don't know if you remember that, but my mother had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Right, and she, I she, she was on a ventilator for 11 years because it started in her lungs. And she was able to go from, just to your example with Michelle, she was able to go from an independent person and she was had faith that was just through the through the sky in that she knew that she knew that she was going to be healed because this was so different than any ALS that we ever experienced because we had other six other family members in our family had ALS and they had it you know show up and 
present differently. It was the upper, it was the arms, it was the legs, but it was never the respiratory system. And with my mom, it was the respiratory system. And I'll never forget to your point, the commitment that you've made to Michelle and the commitment my father made to my dad was unbelievable. There was 20, she progressively got worse as that disease does happen. And she was on that ventilator for 11 years. And he went to the physician and to the CPA and to the, and the CPA said that she, he needed to go to an attorney to potentially divorce my mom because divorce your mom. Divorce my mom because financially it was such a, a huge expense that it would potentially bankrupt him. So just visualize this, people, and just imagine here you are on a ventilator, unable to take care of yourself, and you have your spouse come home and say, the CPA and the and the attorney said that I should divorce you to be able to financially survive what is going to happen. And here's my mother. I'll never forget this day, Agar, looking at my little mama and her crying as my dad tells her this because she's totally dependent on my, my father and 24-hour nursing. So I get it. I've experienced it. And I've yeah. witnessed men of faith like yourself and my father, and he never did get a divorce, thank God. And um, we had that, you know, the next, I don't even know how many years it was after the, she was still pushing her ventilator at that time. And then it was where she was in bed 24 seven for about three to four years. So yeah. I mean, it's, it's a commitment and it's, it's the right yeah. thing to do. Like you said, in the sense that um, God will do what, what he brings you to, he will bring you through. Oh, and yeah. And it's not about our strength, leaning on our own selves and leaning on our own understanding, but leaning on his and trusting the path that he has provided for us. And that, exactly. you know, we lean on his strength, not ours. Thank God. Because if we had to lean on our own, you know, right? that wouldn't go so well. But when you're exactly. when you're a godly man or a godly woman, like you said, you you do what you need to do. Right. That's true. Yep. That's right. And so you have seen God move in your life in many ways. Many, many ways, many, many ways. And uh, I'm going to probably hit an area that uh, most people probably wouldn't necessarily want to go into because mm -hmm. they would feel like it was so private or, 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 or embarrassing or whatever the case may be. But uh, I feel free to do that. That's <laughs> because good. Because of that. Because of the fact that uh, God has given me that freedom when it comes to that. You know, one of the things that I know was holding me back for several years with my walk with God was the temptation to go to certain sites at mm. midnight. Mm. You know, yes. uh, that's that's the midnight sites, you know. And, and here's what's interesting about that, Katie. I call him Slewfoot. <laughs> That's what I call what? the devil. I call, him, I call the devil Slewfoot. Slewfoot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I call him. Okay. Well, Slewfoot knows how to get people, other people in the body mm -hmm. that like certain sites or pictures. And that's who, especially the ones closest to you, that's who he'll get to say, I just sent you some on your phone. Take a look. And you look. Hey, I just sent you something else. Take a look. What you think, man? That's that's something. Married just like you are. Anybody just like you are. But they're sitting there telling you, man, just take a look. Isn't that bad? Isn't that bad? That's, boy, that's something else, isn't it? And I always tell people, in each one of us, there's two people. The man you were before you got saved mm -hmm. and the man you are since you got saved. Yes. And the two people are living right there. Now, what determines what person wins is the things you do and how much you feed. Because, you know, you got to feed each person. When you feed in the word of God to the man that's saved, you can squash and just really squash that old man. But the old man never leaves. You know, because we're always striving 
but we won't arrive until that final day. So right. what happens is, is that the appeal is always to the flesh. Mm -hmm. The appeal is always to the flesh. So I would find myself at, uh, at night, midnight. And let me tell you something, folks, once you go down that road, be on those sites for hour, two hours, three hours. And before you know it, it's two o'clock in the morning. And you're like, oh, my goodness, let me get up here and go to bed. You know, and you're sitting there thinking, you know, that is wrong. But then once again, also, there's that pride thing that as a man, you don't want to tell another man, oh, don't send me no stuff like that. Don't send me no stuff like that. I, I don't need to see no stuff like that. So it it feeds that feeds the flesh part of you. It feeds that, you know. Mm -hmm. So so I found myself reflecting on that I felt like even my success within my business would have to do with the fact that I'm hanging around places, I'm looking at places, or I'm glancing at places and sites that I have no business doing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I might not be the sharpest knife in the draw, but I'm in the draw. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so I know mm -hmm. I can do what I do as far as my business is concerned. And I would find myself sometimes, especially in the midst of this, Katie, I would find myself sometimes going someplace and doing, I mean, I, I'm talking about doing the best presentation that, that I, when I get through, it's like, I know I got this. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, Nobody signs up. Nobody signs up. And so I started having a little come to Jesus meeting with Jesus and saying, well, I think I know what's going on here. <laughs> Pretty sure I know what's going on here. Uh, and uh, let me raise my hand. You got my attention. You got my attention. And then, but then here's what would happen. Go good for a little bit. Then next thing you know, Oh, yeah, it's a slippery slope. And once again, Slewfoot always has some cosigners that are in the body of Christ with you that will say to you, dude, come on, buddy. Just check it out, man. We ain't doing that. We ain't going, we ain't going nowhere. We ain't trying to meet nobody. So just check it out. It don't hurt nothing, you know. And so you start deceiving yourself by thinking, eh, it's not. Really not, I'm not really doing anything wrong. I'm just kind of looking. But what is that doing to your psyche and your inner thing that you're looking at? Here's what a conclusion I came to. I was cheating, but just not physically there to participate in the actual act. That's but right. I was actually cheating. That's right. Because I'm I'm sitting there thinking to myself, okay. Is this some is this a site that if my bride was sitting here looking over my shoulder, that I'd be looking at and saying to her, hey honey, take a look at this. What you think? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, right. no, no, I wouldn't be doing that. So that in itself showed me that that was the wrong thing to do. You know. So oh, yeah. Well, we know I that it to, comes to I steal, to, kill, and destroy. Yeah. So I had to set myself free of that. And uh Huge. and it was so good, so good. When I did, because it was it was so refreshing. Yeah. Because now I also knew that I was being all he wanted me to be. Right. I was doing all he wanted me to do. Plus, even though I'm I don't have nowhere in scripture to prove this, I you could either say I trick myself or just made it look like that, that I felt like my bride's healing and care was connected to what I'm looking at and the thoughts that I'm having as well. So I said to myself, God, I know she's healed mm. because your word says mm -hmm. she's healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, my lane 
is to believe she's healed. Now, your lane is this, whether you manifest it or not so I can see it while we're here, that's not my lane. That's your lane. I hope you will manifest it so I can see it. But if you don't, that's okay because I know she's healed. Right. So, so well, that's, if, that's my favorite you know, scripture, uh, Agar, is Romans 4, 17, that you call things that do not exist as though they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I did that. And it was so refreshing. And then, but see, a lot of times what happens is you can make the decision to not go there. But then you have to remember that there's a little something on your laptop and on your phone, which, call, which is called clicking for a favorite site <laughs> so that you're saving stuff. You know what I mean? I so do. I'm sitting I'm sitting here thinking to myself, okay, I'm good. It's been months. But then all of a sudden I'm going down my bookmarks and I see something. And then I'm thinking, you know, you really need to get rid of this. Uh let's just click on it just for a minute, just to just look for just just look for a minute. Don't ain't no big deal, but just just look for a minute and just just look just to be looking. And let it go at that. And when total freedom came is when I went through, and it took me a minute because I had a bunch of them, okay? I went through every bookmark I had and I deleted anything that shouldn't be there. That's awesome. I, del I deleted it all. It's good. And so now when I go to a bookmark, I don't have to worry about seeing anything or being tempted to look at anything. Yeah, that's it's great. Just, it's like, it's gone. Yeah. And that's it. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, especially in the body of Christ, that's the reason I said when I was looking at what I was going to speak about today, about being set free, that came straight to my mind. That, well, that's the first thing that came to my mind. And I was yeah. like, okay, I'm just going to be transparent. I'm yeah. just going to tell you, because most people in the body, they don't want anybody to know right. that there's an issue there or they've gone in that direction before. But let's face it, we still have the flesh that we deal with. Right. And it's and it's a pride thing. Oh yeah. Oh Good yeah. Because you want everybody to think that you've arrived and you've conquered it all and you got it. You hey, listen. Oh, you all that in a bag of chips and you good. You good. I mean, you. I mean, the last thing you need is you don't. I certainly don't have that. That's no problem. Me. You know that might be your problem, but that's not my problem. You know. Right. That wouldn't be me. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that is. Yeah. You. You. That's exactly what you need to do. Is you need to, you know, remove any temptation from falling, um, that would, you know, affect you. So, like with. Proverbs 11, 2 says, when pride comes and comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. And just two days ago, Katie, 11, just two. two days ago, a good buddy of mine mm -hmm. that's over chairman of our finance committee at our church, mm -hmm. he came over and uh, he came over to pick something up. And so we're sitting there and he says, uh, go to blah, 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 blah. And so I went to it and he said, check that out. And as soon as I went to it and I saw what it was, I just immediately like, boom. I said, dude, I'm good. What are you trying to say, buddy? I said, hey, I'm good, man. I'm good. I said, I just don't go down that road no more. I said, I don't go down that road no more. Oh, yeah, well, okay, all right. So I think he wanted to kind of say, well, you know, so you think you better? If he had said it, I said, yep, that's where I want to be. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you are better. You've let that go yeah. and you're moving yeah. forward in yeah. the light of God. And you don't go you don't go back where you see that when you're in areas like that that you know is not a place where God wants you to do. And see, here's the other thing too. I'm resolved to be and for God to use me right. in the best manner that He can use me. Now, if he chooses to use me doing something, 
Remember how your mind is. Mm -hmm. Because, see, your mind, you can be in the midst. Because this used to happen to me. I'd be in the midst of a service. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, old Slewfoot would have a picture come up in my mind. And for a second, I'm sitting here thinking about it. And then I had to, oh my, what in the world is wrong with you? My goodness, you're sitting here, you're sitting here in church and you're sitting there thinking about something like that. But see, that was working on me to say, see, you got to get that stuff out of your system. You got to get that stuff out from around you. Because even when you in a holy place among holy people and brothers and sisters in Christ, mm -hmm. that stuff can mess with your mind. Oh yeah. Well, that's that's that, about, you remember that time when they talk about giving up, giving giving up for a reprobate mind. I think that's in Romans as well. Talking about you know where God gave him up for a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. You know, and even when you have so much of the he he she she stuff and all like that. You know, he said Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. You know, that's what I'm right. Saying? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and 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 it's and the sad thing about it is, and I'm I'm not trying to go in that direction, but the sad thing is, is that the body of Christ has decided to accept things that God is not pleased with. And the result of that is God is saying, who knows? I tell people like this, who knows when you look at the pandemic and a lot of the, the lot, a lot of the major mega churches and stuff, some of them never recovered from people not coming. Sometimes God has a funny sense of humor. Oh yeah. Sometimes, sometimes God will say, you know what? You guys have not done and acted in a manner that you should have done. Right. You've accepted some things instead of, yeah, you love, you got to love everybody. But then what you do is you got to also say you can't compromise to say, well, I love you. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this and try to work on you in the meantime. You got to say, no, this is not it now. You can't bring that in here. Right. Okay. You can't bring that in here. So let's, let's talk about scripture where we can, we can work on getting that out of you. You know, mm -hmm. Can you deliver from that? You yeah, know? Yeah. And I think that has a lot to do with it because a lot of mega churches, they never recovered even from the pandemic. And well, I think that was God's way of saying, hey, you know, I'm displeased with some of the things you're doing and some of the people you hang around with. Well, yeah, you became, we all know, at least in our line of work, that you become the average of the five people that you hang out with. That's right. That's and right. so if you if you are not with people that are walking a godly life, it's not a matter of um, very much time before you're going to be pulled down into the depths of of the gutter because you can't you can't fight that because you're and surrounded you, by it. So you can't, yeah, you can't let things that are not of God hang around in your presence and That's not right. think because see, I think about the scripture that says. The devil comes as a roaring lion, yep. seeking whom he can devour. Now, he's not a roaring lion, but he comes as one, seeking whom he can devour. Now, who's he seeking? Those who not prayed up. Right. Those who not reading that word and stuff like that. that are, so, they're weak. The example that I, that I saw, I was reading my daily devotion one day, and they were talking about how the way wolves would actually take over the sheep is that if you had a herd of sheep someplace and then there was a wolf that was somewhere around, the wolf would just kind of hang around. Mm -hmm. And what happened is, is that the wolf is there. The sheep know that that's a wolf and it's dangerous. But since the wolf is not doing anything, the sheep just kind of gets comfortable with the wolf being there. And so before you know it, one of those sheep, stray away from the crowd and that's when the wolf says okay gotcha, that's gotcha. Right. i got you now i got you. because what happens around when you let or you let people hang around it's not supposed to be around. When you let people hang around with you it's not supposed to be around with you you tend to get comfortable it's kind of like this i don't cuss i always tell, I always tell people now i know how to cuss that's <laughs> but I don't cuss, okay? But I've been around people that every word out of their mouth was a cuss word. Right. I didn't feel comfortable with that. Right. So what did I do? I just moved away from it. Okay. But here's what I also noticed. When I was working a job, 
before I work started working for myself like we do. Mm -hmm. Same scenario. Same situation where there was a person that cursed, but since we were in a setting like where we were, I couldn't just walk away. So guess what? I got used to them cursing. And it was to the point that sometimes I heard enough of it until sometimes I was not even at the job. And I might even use one of the words that they use. And then caught myself like, oh my goodness, what are you doing? What are you doing? But you've been letting somebody, you've been hanging around or letting somebody hang around with you. And you've been taking all that stuff in and you didn't move away from it. So you got used to them being there. So that now, believe it or not, even though that's not something you do, it didn't bother you anymore. When you heard it, it wasn't that big of a deal anymore. Good because point. you got used to it. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you just get numb to it. Yeah. Whereas exactly. at first when you hear it, you're just like, it's a shock. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So God, has, God has moved. God has moved really great for me since setting myself free. I uh, seem like I fell in love all over again with my bride. Mm. I, I just love her even more and more and more. Uh, I just, I just, when I see her, I just get excited about, and then whatever bits and pieces that I have when she, because I can always tell when she comes back to when it's like she's her normal self, she'll give me one of those looks and she'll smile. And then sometimes I'll say, like I said, she didn't talk that much. And I say, you love me? And she'll start smiling. She'll start doing her hands like this. <laughs> she'll start doing her hands like this. And I was like, oh yeah, oh, no, I, I got you. And she'll start smiling, you know? So yeah. I know she's, she's, she's in her, she's in her normal realm now. Right. You know, she's, back to a normal self there for a minute. That's yeah. awesome. That is so good. Well, you definitely learn how to flex and bend as we deal with different situations where obviously we're not 20, 30, 40, or 50, and you definitely need to learn to, to grow together. And your communication in your 20s and 30s and 40s is going to be different in your 50s, 60s, and 70s. Exactly. It has exactly. to because... Um, nothing is the same, but that deep, just heart strong knowing um, of the unconditional love of God is is just as great as when you have the unconditional love from your from your your bride or from your husband and and that um, you know we're, none of us are going to get out of this alive and and prayerfully that our partner that we're with is going to be there when we fall, meaning not in um intentionally but if disease or illness comes that that you're together through sickness and health and good times and bad and that's the vows that you know many of us have said that through good and bad and sickness and health that we definitely are going to be there and so um what advice would you give someone who may be going through something similar that is being caught up in stuff that they shouldn't be seeing or people they shouldn't be hanging out with or um, you know, questioning what they should be doing in their marriage or their relationship. What advice could you give them? First of all, you got to want to be free. You, yes. You've got to want to be free. See, see, many times what happens is that a lot of people will supposedly get into the getting freedom stage, but they've never actually said, I want to be free from whatever this is. You've got to want it for yourself, first of all. Then you got to pray to God and say, God, I am leaning and depending totally on you Amen. for this. That's right. Totally, totally on you for this. I can't do this by myself because of the flesh part of me that I have. I can't do this by myself, but I know you can and will do whatever needs to be done. So that means I got to spend more time with you I got to spend quiet time with you. I got to read your word and not just read the word, but I got to read it and meditate it on it. Absolutely. Meditate. It. And 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 find scripture that deals with whatever area it is that you need freedom from. And you can find it in the 66 books. 
there's something in those 66 books that you'll be able to find that deals with wherever it is that you are, where, where you are, yeah, wherever you got to right. You got to limit your contact and your conversation uh, with who I call the so-called cosigners. Mm, yes. You know, because, because the friend of mine, and I probably could call him one of my besties, I just don't communicate with him as much as we used to. And a lot of times he'll say, man, I don't ever hear from you no more. Yeah. Why you don't call me no more? You, I said, man, I just be doing a lot of things between with Michelle and stuff like that. I said, I just, a lot of time I have stuff going on. I said, a lot of times, you know, just, just don't get a chance to. Sometimes he'll call me and especially if I'm feeding her, I don't stop and pick up the phone. Right. Because I also know that he's still in a realm where he'll say, check this out mm. and see. So I don't want to check it out. Right. So since I don't want to check it out, I just make sure I limit the conversations and contact that I have with you. Right. That's smart. See, at some point in time, what happens is this. At some point in time, people can pick up on when you're not where you used to be. Oh, yeah. They can pick up on it. They can pick up. They can pick up on it real good. Oh, yeah, They'll see it. It's like, it's like. I'm a, I'm a walking, talking example of that. <laughs> yeah. I always, you were talking. uh about I call it BC and AC before Christ and after Christ. Right, right. Uh huh. That's right. Those are the two people that's inside. That's right. Yep. The old man, the man you were before you knew Christ, and the new man, the man you are since you met Christ. That's right. It's always a battle. It's always a battle. So yeah. who wins? The one you feed the most. That's right. If that's you're right. feeding the old man, the old man's gonna win. But if you feed that new man. But it's consistent. You got to feed him day in and day out. Morning day and night. Day out. That's right. That's right. You can't leave it alone. You That's can't right. Leave it alone. So you got to want to do it. You got to pray and ask God for help to do it. And, uh, and you got to let people know I ain't there no more. Say, so, you know, and, and you can say it on the matter. Hey, buddy, hey, listen. I don't want you to think I'm no goody two shoes and nothing like that, but uh, that, that just don't phase me no more. So don't send me nothing like that. I mean, you know, right. that's all I'm saying. Don't, don't send Setting me nothing boundaries. Like that. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Setting boundaries that you're not on that playing field anymore and not right. interested in swinging that bat. Right, 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 right. Right. That's, so, and, and that, I think that is, uh, that's the thing that people have to do, but it starts with you wanting to be free. Yes. So many people say they want to get be free, but they don't do anything to actually show that's the direction that's that's the direction that they're going. Because if I'm saying I want to be free from being afraid of going down this road, but yet every time you look, I'm just kind of walking slowly down that road, then I must it must not scare me that much. If I really don't want to go down that road, I'm turning around going in the opposite direction. Right. I'm going someplace different, you know? And so, and you got to be honest with yourself. Amen. You got to be honest with yourself. You know, because uh, I've seen the time that probably 10 years ago, I never would have even confessed this to you. I don't, right. I don't went someplace else. Right. Because I, just, that, I don't went someplace else. I just, you know, because it would have been so embarrassing. And all. Right. But once again, when you have that freedom, you're not embarrassed about that because you know who and whose you are. That's right. That's right. Who you are and whose you, you know are. Whose I am, it doesn't matter to me about whatever I'm saying. It's not going to be embarrassing to me. So whoever looks at the podcast, hey, feel free to talk to me about it because That's maybe right. I can help you. Maybe exactly. I can help you. Maybe whatever you're going through, I can help you. So it doesn't, it's not going to bother me. I don't want to bring it up. Hey, you can bring it up because I'm good. I'm good. Right. I'm happy. Yep. You're on the other side of it. And so you yeah. can help them. And that's the beauty of this, this, this podcast is setting yourself free. And my whole purpose and calling, I believe, is to create a platform where people can share their story to help others to be set free as well. That's what it's all about. And so the, I appreciate your um, willingness, your vulnerability to be honest and authentic and raw and real, which is amazing to have that courage because, you know, you don't have to have that strength. You get to lean on his and know that you've been set free. 
You hit it right there, Katie. See, when you're leaning on your own strength, then you're always afraid mm -hmm. of saying something or embarrassing yourself. But when you totally surrender to him, That's right. whatever it is that you need to be free of, and he says to you, I got this. I've told you all the time, I got this. You just yeah. would, you, you'd hang around with me for a minute, then you go someplace else. You hang around. But when you totally surrender that, then it doesn't bother you. It doesn't bother you at all. It's not embarrassing. I ain't embarrassed by nothing. I'm good. I'm yeah. real good. Well, it's not the first time it's ever happened, and it's not going to be the last. But boy, once you get on the other side of it, it is, you know, that, you know, like freedom. You want to just scream it because yeah. you are free. Why? And, and he never leaves you or forsakes you. He's with you through that the whole process. Never. So it's never. never like you have to be leaning on your own understanding or your own strength. That's his promise that he'll make your path straight as long as you, you know, walk that path. You know, right. Proverbs 3, 5, yeah, and 6. Right. Trust yeah. in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. That's right. That's you know, right. We, we, we just got back... Uh, we left on May, May the 6th and came back on the 16th. Got a chance to go to the Holy Land. Which is and amazing. I'm telling you, anybody, if you can go, please go. Now, yeah. it's not for the faint. <laughs> the walking and stuff you're going to do, it is, uh, it's it's exhausting. But, and then, you know, I had people say this to me, Katie. Well, they didn't actually say it to me, but they said it, whether some people related to me. I can't believe he took her over there. And I'm like, okay, why would I not? I'm going to the Holy Land. You think I'm going to the Holy Land without my bride? That's right. Well, but you know, all this, yeah, I had to make arrangements about wheelchair accessibility, on and off the plane, different stuff like that. Yes. And some of the things she couldn't do because of all the walking and heels and stuff that was involved. But, you know, thank God we was, Able to be on a bus that was air conditioned. She was able to sit right there until we got back and we did it. You know, I would have never no. thought about going over there. And not right. Going. No. I mean, that's it, it, that's it, not it, a trip you do by yourself. You do that no. with your spouse. No. And 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 even though I had to do what I do, and you know, I, I I did have a guy, several guys said this to me, but one of the guys the, the night before we got finished, he said, I know why God sent you on this trip. And I, I had no idea where he was going with this. And I said, okay, because we were sitting down eating. And I said, okay, why? He said, God sent you on this trip because you have set the bar so high for mm. us as husbands. Mm. He said, I'm just telling you. He said, I hope and pray that if anything like that ever happened to my wife, I would do for her like I see you doing for Michelle. Mm. And I said, well, yeah. thank you. But once again, I'm, I'm once again like, hey, what we're supposed to do, buddy? What, you know, you know yeah. I, I understood where he was coming. So several people, several guys said that to me on the trip, you know, because it, it was about 35 of us. And uh, 30 of them were from the same church. And my one of my best friends was the one that put the trip together. And uh, so it was just. Well, you know, you go into the Holy Land and you go to Israel. And I mean, when you think about marriage is supposed to be, it's supposed to be a three chord strand. So why would you ever not want to go to the Holy Land to have the presence of where he was and where he walked as that third chord as you and your bride walk through the Holy Land? And there were two things, Katie, that really stood out. I think the second day we went to the Jordan River. Mm. and they had baptism. Now, of course, in her case, you know, it was cool that morning anyway, and I wasn't going to do it like that, but so what the pastor did is he took a cup of water from the Jordan River. You know, he had several of them, probably about 20 of them went ahead, and they were baptized in the Jordan River. He took a cup of water, and he came up, and he actually did like more of a sprinkle for her, you know, and I was rubbing her and the whole time I was like, I was just in tears. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing Katie was, you know, his first miracle was done at Cana at that yes. wedding where he turned the water yes. into wine. Yes. When we went to Cana that third, that at Wednesday, nine of us couples renewed our wedding vows there. Oh my gosh. And all the whole time I'm holding her hands. Oh, I'm just, goodness. I'm just moving. I'm oh, just moving. I have no doubt. How could you not? It was. You could, you could probably was, cut the was, spirit with a knife. 
oh my goodness, it was just, oh. Oh, yeah. It was something else. It was something else. I can only imagine. And, you know, and, and so when I read scripture now, it's more of an intimate mm. reading because I'm reading about some place where before I was reading about a place. A place. Yeah. Well, now I'm reading about God I actually place. was there. Yeah. I actually was there. That's right. And I got a chance to walk right there. And I actually did to be right there. And it was just, it was, it was one of the most moving things that that I ever have experienced. And every little thing attached to it. I, I gotta tell you this before I forget. Um the tour guide we had, we was like we were in Tel Aviv the first night. We were in Tiberia for the next four nights. And for the next five nights, we were in Jerusalem, three different hotels. And so what the tour guide did was, if we were leaving that morning at 8 o'clock on the bus, he would set up a 6.30 alarm call for all of us that was there. The, the hotels would, you know, call our phones to wake us up. Well, because of my bride situation, I had to do it a little bit earlier because I knew I had to take extra time to get her straight. So they would set it like say for six thirty, and I'd always set my alarm for about six ten. Now, I have always used as a song to wake me up was this song by Donald Lawrence saying, "The best is yet to come." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, in this case, Donald Lawrence didn't play, but that was this song by Harry Styles called. As it was. And every morning that song woke us up, right? Well, when I get back, and now every time I hear that song at a spin class, cycling class, or whatever, I would get like a little, little chill. And I was like, at first, I was like, why is this song affecting me that way? Why? Yeah. I can't understand this song as it was. What, what's the big deal? And then it dawned on me that was the song for 10 days. That woke us up over there in the Holy Land, and I was like, "Man, this is this is crazy!" But it's like, "Wow!" I mean, so every little thing attached to it, no matter how small or large it was, it just it was it it it, it meant something different now. That's so, so cool. Well, um, what an experience, and what a testimony, and what a way to be set free in so many ways within one podcast that you've shared with us, which has been just um, an amazing testimony of what God can do and what he, that he's on the throne and his plans are so perfect and you can do all things through him, all things. So don't lean on your own strength and understanding, but lean on him because he will carry you. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank your you heart. For and, and sharing and letting people know how they can be set free. So I just want to make sure once again, you need to go to Katie Huff Ministries on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. And then follow me on Spotify, Apple, Rumble, Facebook, and Instagram and Twitter. You can't miss us. We're everywhere. We want you to see us, hear us, and know that you are set free. And to go to katy-huff.com to look at my courses, my book, my women's retreat that is coming up in October. You definitely want to be checking that out, ladies. It's in Paradise, Montana. So with that, well, I, I just want you to know one thing, my friend. Yes, sir. I love you and I love you and ain't anything you can do about it. <laughs> and I am thankful that I don't want to do anything about it. And that is a good thing because you are my brother from another mother. And I just thank you and uh, bless you. And thank you for sharing with all of the people that are here today and they're listening and they're going to be set free from everything that you have talked about today. So God bless right. you. Thanks. Bless you. Bless you, honey. I want you to get set free by utilizing my pillow 2.0 by going camping and you need a good pillow because you don't want to wake up with a bad neck. And so my pillow has the most amazing pillows and I personally have used the pillows. You want the good towels, you want the good sheets, you want the good slippers, and even your dog is gonna want a bed. And so I, from Katie Huff Ministries, have utilized every one of their products. And I'm coming to you because I want you to be able to have a great discount by going to mypillow.com slash unmasked. 
mypillow.com slash unmasked or mystore.com slash unmasked. And I am just encouraging you to set yourself free from neck pain and not having a good pillow when you're out camping this summer. And so I look forward to you utilizing that uh, code for a huge discount. So have a great camping season this summer. I'm coming to you from Katie Huff Ministries to talk to you about diversifying your finances. Critical time in our life right now, more so than ever before. I have been blessed with Kirk Elliott, PhD, who are the primo people that know exactly where to invest your money to keep it safe and be able to get it and use it by having it in silver and gold. So I'm encouraging you to do what I did. Contact them at kirkelliottphd.com and slash unmasked. Make sure you do that unmasked because you'll get a discount on the processing and you're definitely going to want to have a, a meeting with Kirk and just see how he can help you to secure your future with silver. Have a great day.